Hello, homesteaders. It's good to be with you again. It's been a little while. We've been real busy here on our homestead. We're helping some young people build a few tiny houses. They actually want to build three for the total plan. That will be put into a U-shape. But today we've got two of them that are closed in, and I wanted to show you some of the building materials that we're using and some of the techniques that are a little unusual. Now, I have a little caveat here, and it is that we don't have to build to code in our particular area. If you're building to code, all bets are off. Hold on to your wallet and good luck. But since we don't have to do with that, I am very conscious of making a place safe and making it so it lasts and so that it won't burn down. So we do take those, those measures, but code is just a way to make things very difficult. And so we don't have to go there, thank God. All right, so you can see here this room, one of the things that we do that's a little bit unusual is we use this OSB board, that's Orient Strand Board. It's very inexpensive. Right now, we're getting it here in Colorado in 2023. I think we're getting it for about 12 bucks a sheet. If we had picked it up in January and February, we might be able to cut a couple of bucks off of that. Uh, I always try to buy my OSB in January and February because it is always cheaper than as long as the market is slowing down a bit. And you'll see that we're wiring this. Now, in these homes, we use two kinds of wiring. We have 12 volt direct current wiring, and we use that for the lights, for some fans, and we actually also put in a few plugs for people so that they can have a charging station where they can use 12 volts. And the reason for that is it's so much more efficient. The other wiring that we run is the 110. So our solar system here will have a battery bank and it'll have an inverter and the inverter will change the power from 12 volts in that battery bank to 110 AC. And that way you'll be able to buy a microwave at Walmart, you'll be able to buy just about anything that you plug into a standard outlet. And when we convert it from DC to AC, we lose a lot of power. That's very inefficient. So that's why we run two different sets of wires. Not too difficult in a small situation like this. Now the next thing you'll know is, if you can come this way, we're in the process of insulating these walls and you'll notice I use fiberglass and I wrap this around the wire. Fiberglass has a much higher ignition temperature where it might start to burn than does plastic. And we use plastic. This is these are discards from wrapping product in. As long as they don't have any food on them, it's got to be clean plastic. We shove that in these walls. Now we have another YouTube presentation where we showed you how we build these walls. And instead of a standard three and a half inch wall, we end up with a seven and a half inch wall. And that makes all the difference when we shove that full of our insulation. We get a much cooler in the summer structure and warmer in the winter. Much more efficient by expanding those walls. And you can go to that other presentation and see how we frame it so that that can happen. With the OSB, this it will be the final wall. The only thing we have to do is we'll caulk it, just a little bit of paintable caulking, and all the joints, we'll smooth them down with just a little piece of sandpaper. We'll caulk all the joints, and then we paint it, and we're done. I have one of these buildings finished where I used the OSB, and it comes out with a real nice texture. Where you are right now is this is going to be the kitchen and the bathroom and the shower, all in an 8, six, eight by 16 space. Now people say, 8 by 16, that's only 115 square feet. Do you know that that was kind of the typical size of the pioneer home in America? And many homes 
into the 1900s were very small by today's standards. This is what people could afford, and he can always add on. This young man has a family with three kids. It's going to be pretty snug in here, but they will add on as the money allows, so they won't have to go in debt to build. This is where the shower and the toilet will be. It will actually it'll have a, a door right here that opens this way. There'll be a toilet right over here, sawdust toilet, a bucket toilet, and then this is where you'll be taking your shower. And we have a hot water system that we've already described in another presentation that'll be associated with this. There'll be a refrigerator right here. It's a solar refrigerator, which is much more efficient and tends to last a lot longer than the refrigerators that you buy today at Home Depot. Then it'll have a propane stove and oven, a real nice one, and the sink is right over here. So that gives you an idea of how we're going to pack things in here. Also, this long box here, it's actually 96 inches long, will hold 12 golf cart batteries. And that's where all the batteries will be. So we'll have solar array outside. We'll have the batteries inside. We always put the batteries inside because they last a lot longer and they work a lot better. Batteries like the same temperature that you like. Then we have a vent from the batteries because these golf cart batteries will create hydrogen gas when they're charging or discharging. And of course, thank the Hindenburg, hydrogen gas is extremely explosive, so we just vent it to the outside, not a big deal. So that's where our batteries will be. When we build, we are always using recycled materials. Uh, here's a good example. This door right here was rejected, and the young couple that's building this house, their dad installs windows. This one was rejected. It's a beautiful door. I can't see anything wrong with it, but the customer could, so they ended up with this door at no charge as well as the windows that they have. There's some really nice windows in this little structure. And all of these were castaways. In America, if you're fortunate enough to live here, people throw away everything. If you need windows and doors, find some guys who do the installs. They're usually happy to find a place to get rid of their, all the old windows and doors. And a lot of times, they're in great shape. And so this saves a ton of money when you're, when you're constructing something. And also the amount of glass that we have, and all this is on the south side, is carefully calculated according to the formula that you'll find in the training manual for passive solar. So we have just the right amount of windows so it doesn't overheat in here. And in the wintertime, it will help us heat this. When we build the floor, that's kind of the, where we start on this building project, these floors are all completely insulated. It's very important if this building is going to work well as a passive solar building, and that's what we're striving for. And so the, you have a complete cocoon. Everything is insulated all the way around you. And it's very important that the floor be that way too. One of the advantages of building such a small structure is that we can use shorter materials and therefore a lot less expensive materials. The ceiling here is, the roof joists are only two by sixes, very cost effective. And you'll also notice that most of them are used and most of the materials that we use um, are recycled. So building small has a lot of big advantages and something to think about when you're designing your homestead. These units are made on skids. In other words, when we get done with the house, it's very easy to pull them up onto a trailer and you can find those professional guys who move sheds around. And you can just pull these houses up on the trailer and move them to the next spot. The other thing that's unique about this, we're trying something a little different. We're building three units and they make a U shape. Then all we need to do is build a wall across the front of the U to add a large family room or a greenhouse or whatever you need to your structure.
that's our little tour today. We're going to have more pictures and more presentations uh, concerning this little home as it progresses a little bit further. Uh, there are going to be some interesting places for the kids to sleep and fitting everything into such a small space. I think you'll be happily surprised when you see how it all comes together. Stay with us. We enjoy having you. And keep your eyes on the sky because he's coming back real soon.